folks, it's minus 4 degrees in southwest Missouri. And I'm in the uh, pottery shop. It doesn't look like it with all these rocks laying around here. But it really doesn't. Uh, I'm warm enough right now. But it really doesn't. It's not hard to clean them up and do other fun things. I wanted to show you a fun thing. Well, repairing pottery is always a fun thing. I can stop and do this anytime. Most of these are our pieces. Some of them not, but there's always fun things to do with pottery repair. <clears throat> For instance, a couple days ago, we got this little jug. Our repair fee is $60 an hour. Um, one hour of hands-on time usually means about three weeks of shop time and uh, this little fella is going to take about mm, five hours hands-on uh, beautiful little jug we get a lot of these little jugs to fix but I wanted to talk about some of the subjects I'm lining up here um, get my stick I'm not going to go into these today this one mostly because I'm just now new to looking at faces in the in the way I should have been looking at them for long anyway uh, but what I'm noticing most what, what what is the nose I'm seeing the nose and the nose takes me to the rest of the image and I'm also seeing that most of these images have a lot of stuff in their hair or you know the back of the head or whatever for instance this one has a bird with wings and this is this is neat uh, I don't really want to talk about faces until I have well until I know more I, right now I'm just goggle eyed over them they're everywhere and I didn't know it anyway uh, different little uh, subjects that I want to talk about uh, before I start t t talking about the images and how they were made, <clears throat> I want to stick with, uh, anyway, for right now, uh, the stone splitting process. Uh, there's a large stone, the piece is knocked off, the stone is turned up to where that is this way. They make slices off from it. Some of the slices will be like that but some slices will be like that Oops, I had that in there wrong actually I always put the high spot at the top part anyway some of those slices will look like that to make the tool uh, this is uniface tool processing uh, some will look like a half of one of those like that there's a piece knocked off the end of that uh, this flat base bottom <clears throat> shows me how the stone splitting process was done I want to look at one that's kind of a little bit larger and has that shape today uh, these two right here I find no evidence of any type and this is just one thing I'm looking for I find no evidence of any type of uh, stone splitting process on them now they, they're covered with images, really neat images. This one has two elephants and a bird and an elephant in the middle or a bird in the middle, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But what these are, they're bones. When I take those off, you can see that those are bones that they carved. <clears throat> but what I want to talk about is this shape with the base, the flat base showing. Um, Here's some examples. This is a larger one, a little bit smaller. They're even, you can find this even in pebbles that's split to make tools. And uh, larger, well, it, it shows up on many stones. This, let me get my chair. Sorry about the shaky camera. Um,. This shape, and let me show you a shape of the, 
Now I've got these glued together, or you'd see the bottom of that stone right there is the same shape as that stone, and that stone, and that stone, and that little pebble. Okay. Let's set this rascal up for a second. I'm going to set this one up. But I want it back here. Let me move a couple of these. We don't need all that. <clears throat> now this one, not so much as far as showing a nose. As these seem to be. Uh, and I think you will, if you look close, you'll see an elephant right up here. There's an elephant on this corner. And there's what looks like an elephant here. And, um, an elephant right there. And there's other images within these two stones. But, looking at the stone itself. Now let's look at the back of it. You'll see that the back, the stone splitting process that they did originally to get this stone will leave shapes like this. And even from the back, you can see the elephant here and up here and here and here and other stuff possibly in there. But it has this breaking pattern that is real common. And let's look at this little one. It has the same basic breaking pattern. So that's one of the things that uh, tells me that it is a, uh, you know, worked because it shows a pattern that's consistent. To see the art on the stone, one of the first things I look for are, is the uh, wedge shape on any stone. And uh, I have found that that is the most common uh, shape of the stone that they use to put an elephant in it. <clears throat> and uh, imagine this as a wedge shape of a stone. And there'll be an elephant with ears and a trunk. And many, many times on that same elephant shape, behind it is a bird. There'll be a bird's head above the elephant, sometimes right on the flat top of the stone right there. Sometimes there's enough there to put it. <clears throat> but there'll definitely be an elephant, and then there will be a bird, and the wings will go further out and sometimes fold over if the stone is made that way. Also, I found that if this stone is turned sideways, from the side there's a horse looking at it from this angle. But here's a stone. <clears throat> here's, uh, here's the elephant. One eye is right there. Right there. And the other eye is, let me back up a little bit, is over here. And the trunk comes down here. There's a little triangle eye for the elephant there. And that's more of a roundish eye right there for that side of the elephant. But that's an elephant we're looking at straight on. Now this same structure was used and they made that bird's head. Was in on the eye and its wings go back and down right here on both sides right to here back to here and that bird's body and tail comes down to right here where it flares out on both sides so there's a bird and I've looked at this one sideways and I did not see a horse uh, 
But the wing for this bird, you'll notice that this harder stone has this work done to it. And it's just a multi, you know, a whole bunch of bang, 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 to make that image of that wing. Now the uh, the reason I only did latex right through here was because <coughs> excuse me I needed to show that multi pecking on this part of the stone and you can also see that it would flow further you can see all the multi pecking through here and here and all of these places so what I'm going to do is uh let me turn it a little bit different. I'm going to go everywhere that I can see that they did that pecking. And I'm going to highlight that every latex like this. And right there I can already see a wing coming up. And there's the head of a bird. His tail's right here, and the other wing goes over. <clears throat> and inside that wing is an eye for something. But let me do that. And I'm going to go everywhere that I see that they pecked in. I don't really see an image here right now, but I see this right here and right in there these are all areas that with my big uh, magnifying glass I can see that it's just about you know a lot of multi-pecking now <clears throat> it's easy to say that to make this gigantic bird right here with its wings it goes all the way over here and back all this pecking was done just for that image but as I fill in these areas more and more, uh, and I'll take both hands to do it, but I'll go around all these areas that I can definitely see had been that <coughs> worked that way. And uh, when I get that done, I'll be back. I guess because it's so cold outside, but I changed my cleaning method just a bit. Instead of sand and salt and soap and scrub, 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 which it does kind of polish them. Uh, I'm just cleaning a few small ones with Windex. And it seems to be doing awesome. Uh, I looked at this stone before I started this. And, and I just have to show. <laughs> I just have to do show and tell on this one. Uh, this one gets more and more incredible. Uh, every time you, I look at it. And it sets really good. I mean, it has a flat spot. Actually, it is another one of those pieces I was mentioning that has that shape. This was a stone that was broken. I mean, uh, split up. And there, there, what well, you can see. But this is kind of incredible. I'm going to clean this and do a little show and tell on it today. Folks, I should stop, stop doing this, but I can't. I've got fresh coffee and a breakfast, and uh, I'm out here early in the pottery shop, but Joanna made me cry last night. She got me a GoPro, <laughs> and I, I should stop doing this.
and wait till she reads the instructions and explain it to me. She's good at that. But I don't know. I just want to. And she's not up yet. She hasn't read the instructions. So I'm going to rattle on for a bit. First of all, I just wish everybody could see that horse on the bottom of that. Uh, to me, it's almost running out of the rock. There's the ear, the eye, the nose. Both front legs are shown. And the back flows around there. And that shelf of rock right there, looked at this way, is the tail of that running little pony. But, um... Uh, I just want to drop in again on these shapes. They come in many different sizes. And they're not always exactly, you know, like pyramid on a mountain type look. Some of them are, but I got used to it. Um, one thing I wanted to say, excuse me. Well, two things I want to say. This one is, well, that's that on the other end. This one is, uh, it's got so many cool things on it. It really does. I don't know what I'm looking at. So I'm, I mean, I, I'm not sure what. I haven't examined it that well, but it, it's just filled with images. Little triangle eyes all over it. Not sure if that's a standing elephant or a bear or what. But we'll look at this one again. Lots of neat images on it. Great big elephant right here. Eyes on both sides. Trunk. Uh, but that one right there is really impressive. That one with the whatever <clears throat> just a, a, a quick um and also these uh this is one pattern i look for and this is another but i don't want to talk about the thin slice and uniface tools right now until i prepare myself a little bit but i promised in my very first video two years ago that i would talk about what appears to me as mating, mating, you know, um, and I'm getting enough together here, I think I can say something about it, but let me just show you an example, uh, this is uh, two snakes entwined, this is, uh, this is that horse, Sharing the same head of this horse. And this horse is mounting that horse. And uh, <clears throat> this is one I showed a few videos ago where this young man has a naked woman on his mind. Well, this young lady... has a naked man on her mind. And both the male and female images on this stone have wings pecked out for them. Must mean something. But uh, I'm going to go get some fresh coffee and see if Joanna has read the instructions. <laughs> I'm excited. Bye for now, folks.